What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG. And as always, it's my continuing mission to give you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. You know, what happens when you mix the free flying antics, the out of work circus performers, and the hilarious shenanigans of retired motocrossers as they go off to fight crime? Well, we won't know in this video because that's not actually this game. No, this game is going to be Ancient Frontiers, which is more a mix of the crunchy but still light on its feet hero quest style board games of yore mixed with the futuristic stylings of, let's say, 1980s and 1990s sci-fi. It's a tactical turn-based space game where you go out to perform odd jobs and, luckily for your sake, whatever god made the universe painted it into easy-to-understand hexagons. The game comes out on Steam for the PC on the 21st for $22.99. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Ancient Frontiers. Firing everything, Ronda Rousey's spaceborne love affairs, and the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field being zero. Always zero. Graphics are up first. You know, I spent a lot of time with this game, and I continually noticed the tit-for-tat that was going on with the graphics. But I have to say, as a package, it's actually pretty good for this budget. When you zoom in and take on your capital ship against, say, small pirate space fighters, the laser beams light up the rocks and nearby asteroids, and overall, it's actually pretty good looking. And of course, it doesn't test your hardware at all, which is nice even when you enter one of the busier graphical levels with space storms doing their best to test for epilepsy and all gamers everywhere. It really is pretty much right in the level that you'd expect for a game in this style and range and budget, which means no real surprises and a very digital board game look, and I'll continue to explain that as the review goes on. Now, that being said, I am not in love with this friggin' camera. It almost never feels right. And add to that the issue that when you zoom in on a ship, it doesn't actually zoom in on the ships. It zooms in on the hexa space, meaning if you want to get a close look at the ship, you can see that by raising your head as you zoom right by it and look at space itself. Because as we all know, random blackness of space is always cooler than my mini F2 fighter Zeppelin gunship that I just bought. Overall, though, despite some of those issues, I really did dig the extra attention that they put elsewhere, like the debris flickering and the asteroid spinning in the space map. It does add to this tactile feeling that the game really actually wants to represent. Now, ship designs run the gamut from good to okay, but let's be honest, what looks good rarely is required in space, and so they picked a happy medium ground, where it's sort of utilitarian, but not unpleasant to the eye. And while not really offering a large number of graphics options for the PC, there were enough to dial it in and get it run well, even on the older potato style. Style rig. Now, for me, I would have liked the weapons and explosions on ships to be more detailed, but if you really look at it from the side, they're going for a particular style, and I think they actually hit it. And are there possibly better examples in the genre? Sure, but there are also more, far, far worse ones. Overall, I'm actually pretty happy with what we've got here, and it fits the exact style that they're going for. Sound, music, and voice. <laughs> Well, Commander, I'm sure the signals can wait if you have a more pressing task for me here. Now this is how you get on my good side. You know what? Let's do music first. This is a great deal better than I actually ever expected it to be, with heavy horns and thick percussion to give it a similar tribal beat to Klingon Warbird, congratulations, you're screwed, kind of Star Trek battle themes, or the new Battlestar Galactica. For me, it's the kind of music that always makes me want to spontaneous salute a random person and run off down a tunnel to see if I can find the first available Viper. Now, I've teased many games like this before, where it seems like everybody just downloaded Fruity Loops, bought the O-Gun plug-in, and went to town. That's not what happens here. It's a great mix of ambient tracks and music, and overall, I just really dug it, and I felt it fit the game. Especially some little bits, like a little triangle or bell that you can hear get hit occasionally. Now, that does a good job in widening the overall sound of the tracks, because sometimes tracks like this with heavy percussion can feel like they inhabit just the five fathoms down kind of low areas. This stops that kind of thing. And while I wasn't a particular fan of some of the menu music, overall, there was a lot to like here. It's good stuff, and it's a great deal better than either the sound or what's coming up next, which is voice. And my lord, the voice. The plosives in this game are insane. It's mind-numbing. It's like everyone went out to Sesame Street and picked the letter P and then just thunderspunked it into the microphone. This could have really been fixed with a heavy amount of processing or a $9 plosives filter from Amazon. Even with that, you would have had at least less. That being said, the rest, well, it's also terrible. It's just insanely bad. One of the problems with voice acting in games is that people assume it's voice reading. Humans do not talk like this. 
it could have been spoken and not read aloud and it would have helped a great deal. Now that being said, the love affair between the two characters is brilliant, and by brilliant I mean just as bad as AAA games romances are, but it's almost so bad that it appears like it might be a giant plan to be tongue in cheek, and I thought that that was great. As a package, I'd say, hey, great, they did it, they put it out there, but a lot of times I say this, if you're gonna spend the resources to do something, you might as well at least do it well. And of course, that brings us to sound. You know, just like my rating every night, it's pretty much purely average. While the weapon sounds are fine, and surprisingly enough, in this range, there's different laser weapons that all have their own sounds that sort of fit their appearance. The ship sounds and movement sounds leave a lot to be desired, and sadly, you're gonna be doing that a lot in the game. But overall, other than a few little tidbits, a great deal of it is pretty unsurprising stuff, and a lot more could have been done with the results here, like perhaps more variability and more dynamics in the weapon sounds. And of course, that brings us to gameplay. So when you jump in, you find out that Ancient Frontiers is a single-player turn-based game with two campaigns that tell somewhat opposing stories across a series of events from two different groups of viewpoints. Now, the reason why I brought up HeroScape earlier, and rather any board game like it, is because to me, Frontier really does feel like a digital version of a game that never saw physical release. And I gotta say, in this game, that is a damned good thing. Between missions, you're not bogged down with hugely complex situations. Instead, you pretty much have the ability to buy ships, buy equipment for them, and research new technologies. Then you, boom, hop out into this mission select, which I absolutely loved. It feels very board game-like, with the missions being bounties, VR missions where you just get HP like you're in an Ender's game constant training loop, or jump into the story campaigns. It felt very much like you're turning the pamphlet of a game like Descent or otherwise that's a board game. There's some uniqueness here as well. For example, the bounty missions. The main flagship can't actually go on those missions. And uh, I mean, you don't send out Captain Kirk to catch every Tom, Dick, and Harry that robs someone of their space bucks. Actually, truth is, they do, but here you really wouldn't. And I sort of dig the idea that where they offer some good rewards, there's a bit more danger there. And you sort of have to understand that if you send that ship out or those ships out, your main battle flagship will not be going with them and your main battle leader. Now, when you jump into the game world, it is hexagon, like I said, like a game board with dark areas being discovered as you move through them with your ships, which are outfitted with all manner of assorted skills and abilities you can purchase between missions, as I said before. Now, each ship is able to move a certain amount and take a certain amount of actions and moves depending on their type and what they have on board. You have optional and actual real mission parameters. Optional may be something like exploring a certain number of tiles, while the real ones might be keeping everybody alive. Now, skills like increasing a move's ratio for a couple turns are here, as well as a higher chance to critical hit. Now, even once you've bought some of these skills, it's not really a game that can be the difference between life and death versus some kind of stop loss if you don't use those. Instead, what happens here is a smart use of the map as expected. Extend too far, and it doesn't matter if you're rubbing the special skills like a high schooler in the backseat of a car, you're going to get caught unaware, and even small ships can do telling damage to the larger ones, and I absolutely love that. It softens that very atypical feeling of rock, paper, scissors kinds of mindset we see, and death by a thousand small cuts is actually possible, as ships work through each other's shields until they get to the crunchy armor and the soft humans inside. It's actually a really good system and something that isn't incredibly complex and that most people can just grab onto. Now, hit ability is really a combination of the special skills you've activated, weapons or items you have attached to the ship, of which there are two spots to do so, and range, and a couple other map features. This will give you your overall chance of hitting your enemy and the damage rating in any adjustments there. Now, while I adored the ease of jumping into this and I find that the gameplay really, really worked, there's a couple places that are rough. First, sometimes it can be downright hard to get a good view of your ship, regardless of how far you zoom in on it, and that's coupled with a somewhat uninformative HUD that requires actually hitting a special button to see what stats a ship may have for particular things that other games would usually just have as a pop-up. This was really annoying at certain times when you're really in-depth in a game and you have a lot of ships on the board. Sadly, I also encountered a bug which stopped me from beating the game. When you fly into asteroids, which yes, is stupid, but sometimes for various reasons you might want to do so, your ship can be destroyed, that's fine. But what's not fine is the fact that the game goes absolutely batshit, loses its mind, and doesn't actually let you continue on at all. You can't end that ship's turn, it's just grayed out and you're sitting there. There's nothing you can do except for restart. It's a perpetual mourning for the ship, apparently. Now this is fine in a fairly rare situation that I'm telling you about now, but it's noticeable nonetheless, and that needs to be patched out so that people don't have that issue, because especially with the camera in this game, there are the occasional times where you're gonna move somewhere you don't really want to, and that'll happen. And that, of course, brings us to Fun Factor. Now, this isn't a night out with Charlie Sheen. It's more like a night out with Martin Sheen, where you're just really impressed by the guy, and he's got a lot of knowledge, and you sit back and go, yeah, man, that's actually pretty cool, and then you walk off. Instead of going, man, strippers, this is gonna be amazing, 
It's not that kind of fun. It's more of a cerebral fun, and it certainly is a less complex fun than many other titles in this genre, but it actually works really well as an introduction. This is a type of game that I might give somebody who is trying to decide if this is a type of game that they might want to jump into. It is very enjoyable. Unfortunately, that bug really does hurt it because I hate any kind of level stopping bugs, which that one is, but it can get patched out. It also does bring itself down a little bit in the score because of that uninformative HUD. I really would like to see some of that be brought up to the level of the rest of the game because I think that that could really help. Additionally, I do want to say that that bug unfortunately can happen randomly because of the camera and the constant sort of fight that you end up having throughout. These are some things that need to get fixed. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale with rent on PC games being replaced by deep, deep sale. This is actually a wait for a sale. $22.99 is quite high anyway. And then with these bugs and certainly that game stopping bugs and with the various little elements and to me, the fairly questionable lack of multiplayer. But right now with those issues, and especially because those issues impact the very strengths of the game, which is getting newcomers into it, and even keeping old grognards like myself fairly interested. I think it certainly needs a patch before we can look at this as a full price title. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. And I want to say thanks to all the patrons and all the people who are using the new YouTube gaming side subscribe and sponsorship button that helps out the channel. Thanks to the people who use the Amazon affiliates links in the description. Those all help me do the things like the walking the walk. They help me look at these smaller titles and they really do remove that stress and allow me to move forward and give you guys cool and consistent reviews and other content for the channel. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.